You probably already knew that when we install residential HVAC systems in people's newly built homes, we have to follow a certain set of codes and rules established by your local authority having jurisdiction. But what if we replace equipment in a home that already exists? That's coming up on today's Code Corner. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you do click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as soon as they come out. And don't forget to get your official Fox Family merch available on teespring.com down below this video. If you've ever wanted Fox Family swag, here's your chance to grab some of the same stuff we wear on the job out in the field. Now I'm not here to pretend I know or could even interpret all the codes correctly. In this series of videos, I'm simply trying to open a conversation about codes we cite on the job every day out there without even knowing it. But where's that code in the book? That's what this project is all about. Ultimately, these videos are for my technicians at Fox Family, but if they help you, then that's great. And good for you for even caring enough about the building codes to watch this video. It means you care about your work too. So let's take a look at what the code says about existing buildings and adherence to the code when doing an HVAC changeout. The most important part of California Mechanical Code 302.1.3 Existing Buildings says, in existing buildings or premises in which the mechanical systems are to be altered, repaired, or renovated, the authority having jurisdiction has discretionary powers to permit deviation from the provisions of this code. And the rest goes on to say basically as long as the deviation doesn't affect health and safety requirements as they pertain to the mechanical systems. The International Mechanical Code says in additions, alterations, or repairs, the legal occupancy of any structure on the date of adoption of this code shall be permitted to continue without change except as specifically outlined in this code or as deemed necessary for the health and safety of the occupants. It's called retrofit. By definition, it's an act of adding a component or accessory to something that didn't have it when it was manufactured. So as HVAC technicians, this applies when we change out equipment at a house that basically has already been built, approved by the inspection process, and stamped. In my mind, anything installed after that is considered retrofit. So on your new cut-in HVAC installation on a house built in the 70s, that has never had central AC, we have to install it according to the current edition of the building code. In California, that system has to be installed to today's standards at 5% duct leakage or less and at manufacturer specs for airflow and charging. And those have to be proven by a third party HERS rater. All that happens on new construction as well. But if this is an install on a new construction home, we would have to meet those requirements plus having to provide a manual J We'd be, we would need uh, engineers to draw up plans and specs to be approved on big oversized rolls of architectural drawings too. For some reason that's just not so when I go to cut into an existing home. All I have to do above and beyond our normal duties for pulling a permit is to draw a one line diagram of the gas piping sometimes, maybe the electrical as well, and like how it would run to the unit with distances etc. Just food for thought. Retrofit hands HVAC technicians a house where windows are deteriorating, uh, letting more draft in, uh, and insulation is settling, reducing its effectiveness. Now, this doesn't mean that we have to enlarge the system or anything because homeowners are, will inevitably have to retrofit their windows as well as their water heater, their rooftop, and anything else in the house that they decide to change out. One example of the grandfather rule here in California is when we come across an AC change out on the uh, side of the house. But the, but the new unit is larger and more efficient than the one from 30 years ago. The edge of this unit is already sitting closer to five feet to the property line. Well, in today's version of the building code, we would be allowed to do a change out today at that house and place the unit there, even though the unit would impede on the part of the code that says units can't be installed within five feet of the property line. And that's for noise issues. We obviously don't want to impose on our neighbors peace and tranquility, right? But because the system was installed at an earlier time and the refrigerant lines and the high voltage and the low voltage are already running there, we're allowed to install it right back there in that spot because of the grandfather rule. I can tell you, your experience will be different from one city to another. Some are so strict about these policies and others will have an adaption of it that allows the installation that close on a relocation or new install as long as the decibel rating was under a certain level. 
I think it was like 75 or something. Uh, I mean, this one inspector would even uh, said we could even put it there, and if the decibel rating was higher than 75, we could even build a little sound barrier to deflect the noise. Isn't that crazy, though? I mean, that's why I will never say that I will fully understand the codes, because they're, they're just interpreted differently from city to city and region to region. Here's another example of the grandfather law. In Sacramento City's jurisdiction, we can't cut in package units anymore on the rooftop unless they're completely hidden from view from any point on the street, and I mean any. So they changed the code for their local jurisdiction to make it more stringent. <clears throat> Anywhere else in the Tri-County region, we're allowed to cut in a package unit as usual. I guess for beautification purposes, the city decided to make that change, and I get it. One more example of the grandfather rule is with ductwork. Uh, we're required to install R8 insulated ductwork in most parts of California now. But does that mean that we have to change out their ductwork just because we're changing out the HVAC mechanical equipment out? No, because it was installed correctly at the time the code was written back then. Retrofit installers are absolutely, without a doubt, charged with the tougher of the two installs. If you had a choice of installing new construction or retrofit, which would you choose? Picture this. Or this. Retrofit installers have one of the toughest jobs in all of HVAC because of the conditions we work in. When you have no insulation and no sheetrock on the walls, you can pretty much run ductwork from your ladder through the ceiling studs. Gas lines can be run without belly crawling through the attic or under the house because the walls and the floors are down already. Well, if this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here below on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as soon as they come out. And don't forget to get your official Fox Family merch available on teespring.com down below this video. If you ever wanted Fox Family swag, here's your chance to grab some of the same stuff we wear on the job out in the field. Thanks so much for watching everyone, and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating, Air, and Solar. Don't forget to subscribe. And check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.